Infections play a very important role in this illness. I think it's probably helpful just to recap on how this illness probably develops. And I think there are three stages to this illness. There are things that predispose towards this illness, particularly genetic factors. There are things that precipitate it or trigger it. And then there are things that perpetuate it or keep it going. And the role of infection comes into the second stage, things that perpetuate, things that precipitate or trigger this illness. And we know that in round about 75% of cases, people will predate the onset of their ME to a very clear-cut infective episode. They will describe an infection. It may be something quite straightforward, like a flu-like illness, a respiratory tract infection, gut infection. It may be a rather more specific infection, like glandular fever or chickenpox. And they will say, I got that infection, and I never recovered from that infection. And we know, as I say, that there are a number of viral infections, particularly viral infections, that seem to do this. But at the same time, there are also a number of cases where non-viral infections seem to trigger ME. We know that uh, Q fever can cause an ME-like illness. Um, we know that uh, some people uh, develop ME from salmonella uh, infections, although these are rare. It is primarily viral infections that seem to trigger ME. So that is somewhere where we have a great deal of certainty. Where things become rather more complicated and uncertain and the research evidence is somewhat conflicting is whether these infections that actually trigger ME then go on to persist in the body and play a role in keeping the illness going. In other words, do persisting, in vir persisting viral infections also play a role? And, as I say, the evidence here is somewhat um, conflicting. Um, the other aspect to infections is that part of the perpetuation of this illness seems to be involving the, well, the role of the immune system and the way that the immune system triggers in, kicks in, once you have the precipitating viral infection. And part of the immune system disturbance in, in ME may involve what we call reactivation of latent viral infections. So these are infections that you've already had hanging around in the body. They're particularly herpes virus infections like Epstein-Barr virus and human herpes um, virus type 6. And there is certainly some evidence from the research studies that are being carried out that once the viral infection has taken place, the immune response has taken place, that some of these latent viral infections then become, as it were, reactivated, more active again. So it could well be that the viral infection that triggers this illness off is not playing any further role in keeping the illness going, but as part of the immune system response to that viral infection, um, there is reactivation of latent viral infections within the body. So it's quite a complicated picture. And of course, this is something that really does need to get resolved because there are quite powerful antiviral drugs um, which can help as a possible form of treatment for this illness if viral infections are involved in keeping it going or these reactivated viral infections are, are involved. And one such drug is called um, val valgancyclovir, and there have been some small clinical trials taking place. Uh, another one was recently reported from Jose Montea's group in Stanford in California, suggesting that there may be benefit from giving an antiviral drug, particularly if you get the right subgroup of patients with the reactivated viral infection, um, you give them a course of, of valgancyclovir um, valcite. So that's an interesting approach um, to the role of infection in this illness. I think there are other things that trigger this illness off in addition to the viral infections that we've already been talking about. And these are things that we would term immune system stressors. And I have a particular interest in the role of one particular immune system stressor, which is a vaccination, which is essentially mimicking the effect on the body's immune system of an infection. And we know that 
a small but significant number of people with this illness will either predate the onset of their illness to a vaccination or they will describe a very significant exacerbation of symptoms or a relapse following a vaccination. Um, it's quite interesting when you look at reports from people who describe the onset of their ME following a vaccination that there are certain vaccinations which seem to be heavily weighted in this respect and one vaccine in particular is hepatitis B vaccine which seems to be a, a trigger factor for this illness in, a, in, in quite a considerable number of people that I've collected over the years. So whether there is something slightly strange about hepatitis B vaccination in relation to ME, we're not quite sure at the moment, but it certainly has been linked to the onset development of other autoimmune disorders such as SLE um, in the medical literature. Having said all that, uh, I think it's important to also note that in addition to our 75% of people who predate the onset to a fairly clear-cut infection or perhaps a vaccination, we have a group of a significant minority who develop this illness in a rather more gradual fashion and do not predate the onset of their illness to any particular um, event, whether it's infection, vaccination or whatever. They may describe a series of infections uh, after which they become more and more unwell and eventually, if you like, slip into uh, an ME-CFS-like illness. But they don't have a clear-cut um, factor which seems to be triggering their illness. Trauma can occasionally be a trigger factor in the development of this illness and just like infections and vaccinations it can sometimes cause a major relapse or exacerbation of pre-existing symptoms. So we do have a small number of people who will predate the onset of their illness to perhaps a major road traffic accident. Um, another form of, of physical stress, if you like, which sometimes um, is, 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 is described as, as, as an onset to this illness, um, is in people who undergo major surgery, general anaesthetics. Um, so I think you could bring those people into this group as well. Heeft u een vraag naar aanleiding van deze video? Reageer op YouTube of tweet naar het MECVS Vereniging. Of mail naar wvp.me-cvsvereniging.nl De beste vragen worden in een volgende video behandeld.